Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Jason. Thanks for checking out this video. Now, we are going to be following up on this power station. This is the Ocatel P2001. Like the name suggests, it has 2000 watt hours of capacity, a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter, and it's currently available on a Kickstarter for $999. Now, last week I did put out a full in-depth testing and review video for this power station. So if you haven't seen that, I'll put it down in the video description so you can check it out. But during that video, I didn't have really good solar conditions, so I didn't get to max out the solar input. Well, the weather conditions are really good today, so let's go ahead and take this outside and try getting a full 500 watts on solar input. Okay guys, let's go ahead and do some solar testing on the power station. I have four of my 180 watt Boost RV solar panels connected together. These two are in series, these two are in series, and then they're connected together in parallel. And I have a 12 gauge wire running inside so that we can get power into the power station. Now the solar conditions today are really good. It's around 40 degrees, just a little bit of haze, but no clouds. Um, we're feeding chicken. We're just feeding chicken. What's their names? This is Blaster, this is Shelby, and this is Buffy. You got one other in the chicken coop right now. We're missing a chicken, aren't we? We have, we have, hey guys, right there. Right Come on, piggy. Missing out on the treats. Okay. Now that we got everything hooked up, let's go ahead and go inside and see what power we're getting in on the power station. Okay, so I just connected the solar panels to the Anderson power pole connection, waited a few seconds, and it got up to 500 watts input. Now here's a closer look at the display. Remember, it's 12 to 48 volts at 15 amps, so it seems this combination of four solar panels, two in series, and then connected together in parallel, seems to work really well on this power station. Now I thought it'd be helpful to test to see if we can have a large solar input and run a large load on the AC inverter. So I have my 1500 watt heater running on the AC inverter and we're still getting 500 watts input. So I'll definitely extend the life of this power station if you had solar coming in and a large AC load going out. Now most power stations are limited to around 100 to 200 watts solar input. So it's nice to have a larger power station that accepts more solar charging. Now, if you guys remember in my initial review of this power station, I found out that the DC output gets turned off after four hours if it doesn't have a two watt load on it. Now, the problem with the 12 volt compressor fridge is it'll cycle on and off. And so once the compressor turns off, it doesn't pull any power. So after four hours, the power station is going to shut off because there's no load. Now I had a couple of viewers recommend trying to put an LED USB light on the power station to draw more than two watts to see if that would keep everything turned on. So I have my ice code go 20 plugged in to the DC output and I have an LED USB light plugged in as well. Let's go ahead and see if this runs longer than four hours. Okay. So it's been about five and a half hours. I came down and checked on the fridge. It actually shut off. So having a USB port powered does not keep the DC output powered on. Okay. So let's go ahead and try this again. I have a fan plugged into the DC output this time. It's pulling five Watts and the fridge is now powered on. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the screen. So the power station is sitting at 93%. We're going to go ahead and let this run overnight and see if the fridge is still powered on in the morning. Now I think this should work now that we have the consistent five watt load on the DC output. Let's see what happens. Okay guys, it's the next morning. Now I'm pretty surprised here. The fan is still running, but the 12 volt compressor fridge is shut off. So it looks like the 12 volt cigarette plug and the barrel connectors are separate from each other, even though they have the same power button because the fan stayed running overnight, but the fridge shut off. So pretty disappointing results. I thought if we had a consistent load on the DC output, it wouldn't shut off. Now, just for fun, I also decided to run this 12 volt compressor fridge off the AC inverter of this power station. And that test ran for a total of 2,959 minutes, which is a little over 48 hours. And the fridge pulled a total of 480 watt hours. Now this has around 1500 watt hours of capacity. So that means the AC inverter used over a thousand watt hours of parasitic drain. So you don't get that long of a runtime with a 12 volt compressor fridge if you run it off the AC inverter. Now, of course, if you don't use the DC output, this won't be a problem for you. But for me wanting to take this camping or to use in a power outage to power one of these 12 volt compressor fridges, I don't wanna have to come and toggle the on and off switch for the DC output every four hours. Okay, so for the last test that I want to do during this video on the power station is to test out the UPS function more in depth. Now, in my original review, I did test that on a heater and everything seemed to work fine, but here I have some more sensitive electronics. Let's see how this goes. So taking a closer look at the power station, you can see the battery is completely full. So it's taking power from the wall and passing it straight to all these devices. 
Now, if we were to unplug the power station from the wall, it should swap over to the backup battery inside in about 10 milliseconds. So we'll go ahead and see if anything shuts off. So I have three devices that I'm gonna be testing on the UPS mode. First, I have my HP laptop here in the back with the battery removed. So it's just running off the power supply. If I unplug it, the laptop shuts right off. Right here, I have a Ryobi charger. And if you unplug it, it goes red right here. So I wanna see if this stops the charging process. And also I have another battery charger that will blink green if it stops the charging process. So pretty sensitive electronics here. Let's see what happens as we unplug it. Now, one last note, my multimeter here is showing 120 volts. Now, as we swap over to the AC inverter on this power station, it will drop down to 110 volts. So just keep your eye on that. Okay, also remember that my studio lights are plugged into this as well. So maybe those will flicker, maybe they won't. Let's go ahead and unplug it and watch it swap over. Three, two, one. Okay, so the voltmeter is now showing 110 volts. The laptop is still running. The charger here is flashing green and this one is still charging. Now I did see a very, very fast flicker of the lights as it swapped over. So that did show us that there is a slight loss of power, but nothing big. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug it back into the wall. You should see the voltage jump up here. I don't think there'll be any issues, but let's just watch what happens. Okay, we're sitting back at 120 volts. Now overall, I'm pretty happy with the UPS mode. It definitely works as advertised. In my previous video, I pulled around 750 watts, I think, through the UPS mode. This one was more for sensitive electronics, so I only pulled around 300 to 100 watts, but still didn't see any issues, especially with the laptop here. Okay, so coming to the conclusion of this video, it's good to know you can get a full 500 watts charging input via solar panels on this power station. Also, it's good to know that you can run sensitive electronics on the UPS backup mode, like that laptop without the battery in it. These LED lights for my studio and those battery smart chargers didn't have any issues running those when it swapped over to the inverter from the UPS backup mode. Now, we also did confirm that we cannot run a 12 volt compressor fridge on this power station through the DC output. You can run it on the AC inverter, but you won't get that long of a runtime and the battery can depletes with the AC inverter parasitic drain. So it's very interesting to see that even with a five watt load on a barrel connector, the 12 volt socket still shut off. So definitely if your main purpose of purchasing this power station is to run a DC powered fridge for camping purposes or for uh, power outages, you're going to want to look for a different option. However, not everyone does that. So if you still want to use this power station for running large AC appliances, uh, running something if the power's out, especially if you want to have that UPS mode here as a backup, this is a great option for $9.99, but it might not be for everyone. So hopefully you guys found this information helpful. The main purpose of these videos is just to test the power station, find out any issues, test to see if it stands up to all the advertising claims so you guys can make the best decision on if this one is right for you or not. Anyway, guys, thanks for checking out the video. We'll see you guys in the next one.